I'm Dr. Mike Silber. I'm a professor of neurology at the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine and Science, where I work in the sleep center. Um, that is my subspecialty in neurology. I'm also chair of the opioid um, subcommittee of the Restless Leg Syndrome Foundation Scientific and Medical Advisory Board, and it's in that capacity that we have written an article about the appropriate use of opioids in the management of refractory restless legs. Now, restless leg syndrome is a very common condition. Um, it is most often eminently treatable by a series of first-line medications, including dopamine agonists and alpha-2 delta ligands, such as gabapentin. But these drugs are not without problems and many patients with time be de um, become refractory to first-line therapies. Um, this includes the development of side effects such as impulse control disorders with dopamine agonists as well as the phenomenon called augmentation where perhaps as many as 50 to 70 percent of patients on dopamine agonists will develop a worsening restless legs with time in which the symptoms spread to the arms, they are no longer so responsive to therapy during the night, and perhaps most important, spread earlier and earlier in the day. As a result of these and other side effects, there is a significant group of patients who need further treatment and long clinical experience as well as some excellent studies including a large controlled trial of the use of oxycodone have shown that opioids are effective in this group of patients. Now we're all aware of the terrible problems of opioid overuse and opioid um, use disorder um, is starting sometimes with the use of opioids prescribed for acute pain and for chronic pain and we want to be responsible prescribers of opioids for restless legs. But refractory restless leg syndrome is very different from chronic pain. It has a different pathophysiology, a different epidemiology, and patients with refractory restless legs are often desperate. Their quality of life is low, they have intense insomnia, they may have suicidal depression, and we really do not want to deprive these patients of the appropriate use of opioids. So in our paper, we review some of the basic science of opioids in restless legs, some of the studies done with, on opioids, but the most important part of our paper for practicing clinicians is a guideline of when they should be used and how they should be used. Opioids for restless legs are used in far lower doses than for chronic pain. For instance, oxycodone, either short-acting or long-acting, the average dose is about 20 milligrams daily. Um, even methadone, which is highly effective in restless legs, the dose is usually on an average about 10 milligrams daily. And at these doses, the risk of opioid use disorder is far, far lower than in high, with higher doses, not non-existent, but much lower. So we really want to restrict the use of opioids to patients with refractory restless legs who failed other forms of first-line therapy. Second, we want to look at other contributing causes such as iron deficiency, other medications such as serotoninergic working antidepressants which could worsen restless legs, or concomitant disorders that haven't been properly treated, such as sleep apnea. We want clinicians to think about using other medications in combination in lower doses, but when these don't apply, we really ask that patients not be deprived of opioids. When starting opioids for restless legs, one wants to do a proper assessment of risk of addiction, and there are various tools that can be used. Uh, an opioid contract should be signed, a urine drug screen done, and then the patients followed regularly, generally every three to six months, and to be sure that they are benefiting from the drugs, that we've got them on the right dose and the right schedule, and that there's no evidence of abuse. Um, we check the state databases regularly, and a urine drug screen is generally done at least once a year. Patients 
um, finds that these precautions are perfectly reasonable when explained carefully to them. And after one's treated a few of these patients with opioids, one realizes the immense change in their quality of life. Um, in summary, we believe that opioids for refractory restless legs are highly effective in most patients, that the doses are low, that the risk of opioid use disorder is low, though not negligible, that it is manageable with um, careful precautions, and basically that the risk-benefit ratio is low, and we have published this paper so that both specialists and primary care physicians can feel more comfortable with their use, not feel that they are at risk as prescribing physicians in, u in, pr in treating these patients and can help um, relieve their suffering. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.